Hello to all students. I hope you are doing fine. I am Professor Masood Fuzail. Today we are going to discuss class bivalvia. As you know that class bivalvia is a very important class of phylum mollusca. And class bivalvia include freshwater mussels and marine mussels. Freshwater mussels are usually short in size while Marine water mussels are usually large in size and have heavy shells. So today in this video, we are going to discuss some external structure like shell of the bivalves as well as digestive and circulatory system of the uh, mussels. So let's move on to the lecture and we will discuss some important uh, systems of the class bivalvia. First of all, uh, let's look at the meaning of bivalvia. If we look at the meaning of bivalvia, bi mean two and valvia mean leaf because the body of the bivalvia includes two leaf like structure just like my two hands and uh, they close with each other and form a single shell like structure uh, and the animal of the class bivalvia live inside these two shells. So if we look at the, look at the diagram of uh, a class bivalve animal which is known as muscle, uh, the shell of these animal consists of two portions. This is first well and this is the second well. Each shell or each portion of the shell, usually this whole structure is only one shell but we have divided into two halves so that we can easily understand the structure of this shell. Now this is the dorsal portion of the shell and this is the ventral portion of the cell. On this side is anterior side and this is the posterior side. Mouth is present on the anterior side and the anus is present on the posterior side of the shell. If you look at the internal structure of the cell, shell is usually made up of calcium carbonate and some amount of protein. Usually calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate is impregnated in the body of the shell. Inside there is a cavity as you can see in the diagram, the blue color portion of the diagram shows mantle cavity. Mantle cavity is a cavity present inside the shell which usually secrete calcium carbonate in the form of a shell or it also has some important functions of the body and mantle is very important structure and phenomena of these animals. On the anterior surface of the shell anterior side of the shell there is a small outgrowth which is known as ombo. Ombo is a outgrowth present on the surface of shell which describes the age of the shell. As the shell becomes older this ombo becomes also bigger and wider. On the anterior side of the shell there are two teeth present on, the, on this surface of the shell and the grooves are present on the lower surface of the shell. These uh, when, when the both shells are closed or shut, their teeth and grooves are uh, matches with each other, penetrate each other so that the twisting and the movement of the shell can be prevented. Inside the shell, as you can see in this diagram, the red color portion of the shell, these are scars for adductor muscles. Adductor muscles are specialized muscles which are made up of special protein, collagen protein, which tends to close the shell all the times. So when they contract, these both shells come close to each other and become closed. And uh, the animals which lives inside the body of the shell or inside the cavity of the shell uh, is protected with the help of these muscles. These muscles, uh, adductor muscles are so strong that they are very hard uh, to open them out but the sea star this has ability to open the shells and can eat the animals uh, inside the present inside the uh, shell of the muscle many uh, parts of the world these shells are eaten raw or sometimes cooked people use uh, some tools to open the uh, shells and eat the animals inside the uh, these muscles so in this way, uh, today we have discussed uh, some important features uh, of the shell and one more important thing about these shells that these shells sometimes uh, it has two openings. 
one opening is on the dorsal side of the gills which are present inside their body and that is known as incurrent siphon and one opening is present on the ventral side of the gills which is known as excurrent siphon water enters the shell through incurrent siphon and water leaves the shell with the help of excurrent siphon so when water enters the inside the shell there are if there are present some uh, particles like parasite or sand like particles when they enter the body if they get stuck in the mental cavity so the animal thinks that and this and this particle of sand or a parasite is a danger is an enemy so the mental of the animal or the shell starts secreting calcium carbonate around that particle when that particle is surrounded by uh, calcium carbonate it accumulates uh, in in days weeks and months and it forms a round structure which is known as pearl which is very important in pearl industry most of the people as you see they go on the beach and uh, they look for the dead mussels which uh, are flown, which are brought by water currents on the surface of beach they collect these uh, mussels and they open it and they find some uh, if they are lucky they find pearls which are very expensive and used in um, industry to make uh, jewels and also can be used as a uh, as a medication to, to fulfill the calcium deficiency in different medicines so this is how pearl is formed inside the body of the muscles now let's look at the digestive system of the um, muscles so i have drawn already a diagram for you so this is a, a body of the shell which has a dorsal side ventral side anterior side and posterior side inside this body you can see the internal structure which is digestive system of the body as you can see in the red color this is the foot which comes out project out from the body of the uh, muscle so as i told as i mentioned earlier that uh, the uh, both shells contain a structure which is known as gills so when water enters the uh, incurrent siphon through incurrent siphon towards gills uh, for oxygenation and when water comes inside the body of the shell waters contain uh, small very some very small particles of food like detritus food particles or something like that which is present in water which is trapped by cilia present on the surface of gills these food particles are then collected and brought towards mouth so that they can be ingested within these particles there are some other particles like stones like sand like such particles which are not considered as food they are pushed back towards the posterior side of the body uh, and these particles are uh, thrown out of the body with the help of water and uh, through excrement siphon and these particles usually are known as pseudofeces because these feces are not uh, processed by the digestive system so when the food particles reaches to the uh, towards the mouth surface there are lobes lobes which are known as labial paps labial paps are specialized structures present on the surface of mouth which helps to collect the food particles coming towards mouth labial paps collect the food particles and push them into the mouth cavity mouth cavity leads into a tube like structure which is known as esophagus where mucus is secreted the food particles are joined with a string of mucus and all uh, mucus as you know that is sticky which uh, and food particle usually stick with the uh, surface of the mucus this string of mucus along with food particles is uh, uh, moved into the stomach which is the uh, main digestive organ of the um, muscles so i have taken a an alloy diagram of the stomach over here so that we can easily understand the internal structure of the stomach so this is mouth which leads into esophagus esophagus leads into stomach the outermost protective layer of the stomach which is known as gastric shield inside the gastric shield is a structure which is rod like structure the anterior portion of this structure is known as crystalline style while the rod like structure of this structure is known as style sac this is the structure which is used to uh, dislodge the food particles from the mucus string mucus string is rotated around this 
structure which is known as crystalline style when all the string of the mucus is uh, rotated around this structure then this structure is moved in such a way that uh, which uh, uh, helps to dislodge the food particles which are attached to the surface of the mucus string when food particles are removed from the string these are being digested by the enzyme present in the stomach and some acid which helps to digest soften the food particles some digestion takes place inside the cavity of stomach which is known as extracellular digestion while well, some of the digestion is going to take place just outside the stomach in the cells which are known as digestive glands which is known as intracellular digestion so after intracellular and extracellular digestion food has been digested and then is pushed back into the intestine in the intestine as you can see right over here this is a large intestine which coil around in the body visceral mass and food is being absorbed and absorbed food is transported into the body where it is assimilated and after that undigested food is projected out through ns right over here which is very close to excrement siphon where water is moving outside the body when water moves outside the body these feces are removed from the body through excrement sinus just alongside the digestive system there is an excretory system which is composed of nephridium nephridium opens outside through a pore which is known as nephridio pore waste material present inside the siloam or silamic fluid is being absorbed by this nephridium and then transported towards the posterior side of the body through nephridio pore where the waste material is excreted outside the body with the help of excrement siphon so in this way uh, this whole structure uh, is known as digestive and excretory system i hope it makes sense now let's move on towards the circulatory system of this animal so i have made another diagram for you so this is a shell the one portion of the shell dorsal side ventral side anterior side and posterior side dorsal side of the body is contain contain a structure which is known as heart these animals usually have open circulatory system and her heart has only one chamber this heart contain oxygenated blood which is coming from gills when this heart pumps the blood moves towards anterior side and posterior side simultaneously on the anterior side there is a blood vessel which is known as anterior aorta which is taking this oxygenated blood to the anterior portion of the body and while the foot region while there is a blood vessel on the posterior side which is known as posterior aorta which is taking oxygenated blood to the posterior organs or surfaces of the body when blood moves to the anterior side of the body and through anterior aorta it goes into the a sinus because this they contain open circulatory system in open circulatory system blood comes out of the blood vessels and bathes the tissues so there is a sinus present in the foot region which is known as blood sinus of foot visceral uh, there these are portion which is known as visceral mass blood enters through blood sinus of the foot where it bathes the tissues of the body where oxy, ox, uh, gaseous exchange takes place oxygen is giving out and co2 is taken Uh, then this blood is collected back from blood sinus of foot and then moves into another blood vessel which is known as vein of foot as you know that vein is collecting blood and taking towards the heart this vein moves towards uh, right over here and there is a cavity which is known as uh, which is right close to the cavity which is present in the gills so this blood is provided to the uh, mental cavity where gills are present and oxygenation is taking place as you know that water is entering through in current siphon when water moves through in current siphon passes over the gills oxygen present in the blood is absorbed and co2 is given out when the blood oxygen is absorbed that oxygen is transported towards blood which is coming from different portion of the body when blood become oxygenated it is transported through a vein into the heart now let's look at the blood vessel which is coming to uh, which is going toward the posterior side of the body that is known as posterior aorta posterior aorta takes blood to the posterior organs of the body into different sinuses where blood comes out from the uh, body and bathes the tissues and organs of the body where gaseous exchange takes place after that this blood also transported oxygenated blood from here also transported back into the heart so all the oxygenated blood which is coming towards heart is coming from mental cavity where gills are present and the oxygenation is taking place when all the oxygenated blood has been received from the 
uh, gills and mental cavity then this oxygenated blood again is uh, pumped towards the anterior and posterior side of the body and whole circulation of the blood completed so in this way i hope uh, this makes sense uh, uh, so far uh, this is it so hopefully see you in the next lecture until then bye